As we close out the 31 Days of Horror, this week is all about horror fairy tales. And this came to me really when I was looking at some suggestions from my students. And I noticed a lot of them talked about a specific movie that they had seen when they were younger that really affected them personally now and that they would love to rewatch. And so that was Guillermo del Toro's beautiful and perfect fairy tale, Pan's Labyrinth. And with Pan's Labyrinth, there's a reason that it sticks within the subconscious of so many people. It is a fairy tale that can be seen as metaphor happening and playing out in real time. It's one of those movies where you don't really consider it a horror film until you're actually watching it and understanding the implications of what's happening to our main character, this little girl named Ophelia. What Guillermo del Toro provides is an avenue. It is a beautiful story in where it feels very personal and it feels like something that could happen or something that has happened to our grandparents, to our great grandparents, because there's enough hint of history to be mixed with the fairy tale to make it feel like it is folklore. And I think that makes it very interesting. Basically, the premise is it is 1944 Spain, and the fascists have won the Civil War. So there's a lot of turmoil going on in the world for this young girl, Ophelia, who has her pregnant mother, and they are now being forced to live with their new stepfather, who is this fascist general, who is just this terrible man, who does atrocity after atrocity, showcasing the evil that men do. So, with all of this evilness around her, Ophelia is meant to cope with this, and we see this in the form of her one day finding an entrance to this underground fantasy world. And that's where Pan's Labyrinth is most effective. It is cross-dimensional. It could be seen as a way where she's trying to escape one horror and falls into this new fantasy horror that ultimately turns out to be just as horrific as where she comes from. There are so many standout scenes in this, and Guillermo del Toro does not pull any punches. This can be seen as a kid's film, but you have to understand that from the lens of a kid, a lot of these concepts are very terrifying. We have the idea of the trickster fawn, who basically is you trading in one monster for another. And then, of course, the inclusion of the pale man. One of the most horrific and most personal creations Guillermo del Toro has ever created. Just that scene of Ophelia being in that room with that thing as it slowly comes to life and just slowly and methodically tries to get her. It's these moments of dread where you can feel this comes out of Aesop's fables. This comes out of those, those nursery rhymes that we heard as kids. These are stories that are meant to be cautionary tales. And what I think Pan's Labyrinth does so well is it tells us the story of this young girl who's just trying to survive. It is one of those movies that touches your soul 